Mismor le David, Adonai roi lo yechzar, Pinodesh yar bitzeni, Al mei menuchot yena haleni, Nafshi yeshovev, Yancheni vemaglei tzedek, Leman shemo, גם כי אלך פגי צל מוות, לא ירא כי אתה עמדי. שבטך ומשענתך, המה ינחמוני, תערוך לפני שולחן. נגד צוררי, דישנת ושם מראשי, כוסי רוויה. אך טוב וחסד, ירדפוני כל ימי חיי, ושבתי בבית אדוני, ליורך ימים. A Psalm of David The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Adonai Natan Baronai Lakach Yishem Adonai Mefarach The Lord is given, the Lord is taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We gather here today to express our love and respect and to say goodbye to our dear beloved David Golden who this past week was taken from us. Our hearts are heavy with grief over his passing. We pray that God should send comfort to all those who knew him and loved him and mourn that he is no longer with us. David was a beloved son to Lewis and Miriam Golden of blessed memory, a loving father to you, Ethan, to Molly, your partner, a loving grandfather to Casimir, a loving brother to you, Sylvia and Bob, a loving husband to Gail, a loving friend to so very many who he drew into his circle and who he held dear. David grew up here in Cleveland, the son of Lewis and Miriam. The family was very involved in Heights Temple, our synagogue. And David's father was a past president of our congregation for a number of years. David graduated from the Western Reserve Academy and went on to attend Harvard University, where he was a member of the student group that wrote the famous Harvard Lampoon. David did the captions for the cartoons. He was a wonderful writer with a crisp sense of humor. David's original plan was to teach history in a private high school. He was extremely bright and articulate. He would have been a great educator. But his parents insisted that he join the family business. David eventually became its treasurer, with his office next to his father's, working with family for his whole life. He was very happy in that role, and happy with his life. But there was a part of him that wished that he had continued writing, perhaps that he had taught. David had his share of challenges but he also had a wonderful life filled with a great deal of love 
and kindness and generosity and joy. He was a loving brother to you, Sylvia, and to Bob. And Sylvia, you were sharing with me a moment ago that you were remembering back to fun times shared together. I know that you saw each other frequently and would get together socially and enjoyed a wonderful friendship. Never a harsh word between you. And Bob, you shared with me that over the years you had an especially close relationship with David, that you enjoyed a good working relationship with him, and that you were an important support and guide to him. You shared that he was a marvelous partner to work with in the business. And when David faced challenges in life, you were the person he felt he could come forward to as he confronted and acknowledged those challenges and sought your help. And it was because of your help and support that David was able to overcome those challenges and to transform his life. Your support to him was very much a great gift. Ethan, you loved your father and you were very fond of him. He played an important role in your life. You followed in his steps studying at Harvard. He was so happy that you were there. You shared many wonderful memories. When you were young, you often took trips together, a number of them out west. Later, as an adult, you renewed those trips with your father, traveling with him often to exotic places, such as to Egypt just after the revolution, an extraordinary trip. He was not your usual dad. But there was something endearing about having a dad, as you put it, that was like a larger-than-life literary figure. He was irreverent. His style of living was expansive. He had a certain skepticism about people that you appreciated and learned from him. And maybe particularly appreciated that he was able to couple that skepticism with extraordinary spiritual generosity, a love of people, a desire to draw people into a circle, to be kind to them, to talk and engage with them, to help them. You were touched by his genuineness, genuineness, his generosity, and his good spirit. David lived a very flamboyant lifestyle. He loved to entertain and he held many parties. He actually owned a cannon that he would fire from time to time. He held extravagant birthday parties, one featuring elaborate fireworks and a marching band. He hired a hunter to hunt two bears and had them stuffed by a taxidermist and displayed in his home because his nickname in school was Bear and the name Bear was also inscribed on a plaque on the box at the orchestra. He loved trains so much that he built a model train set so large it required a house. And he collected practically everything ever sold by the Franklin Mint. He collected those coins that commemorated historical events because he was very much a history buff. And he also collected coins that commemorated literature because he had a deep love of literature as well and a very deep knowledge of literature. He subscribed to more newspapers than he could ever read, and they piled up around the house. He restored a 1940 Lincoln Town Car, even though he almost never drove it. He lived with a lot of color and a lot of character but also with a lot of joy and with a lot of love. David was a libertarian with strongly held views. He was offended by what he saw as an intense government intervention in people's lives, and he frequently wrote to newspapers with his commentaries. He was a good wordsmith and a poignant writer and could write very focused commentary. Ethan, much in your life, you would choose to do different but you shared that he taught you to empathize more with others, to be understanding of others, and not to judge, a quality you hope to carry into your life. 
and you shared with me that he was unique and very likable and that you will greatly miss him. And we pray that God sends comfort to you and to Sylvia and Bob and Gail and the whole family as you grapple with his loss. David also had many wonderful friends who were a very important part of his life, most especially his friends from the Hunt Club, with whom he went fox hunting for many years, as well as many others. He was very loyal to his friends, and they in turn were very supportive of him as well. David was very generous. He had a box at the Cleveland Orchestra. He often gave away his tickets to others and entertained people in his box. He was generous to law enforcement. He supported his high school, the Western Reserve Academy, and often gave orchestra's tickets to its students and made a significant gift to the school. He always generously supported the campaign for Jewish needs of the Cleveland Jewish Federation. Bob, you always had his card. And he supported many other causes as well. David built around himself a network of friends who he supported and who supported him with great loyalty to each other. David had many good traits. He was very affable. He was erudite, well-educated and informed and extremely articulate. He was a scholar of languages and an excellent writer. He was a loyal and devoted friend, always there to help people in need. He truly liked people. He was generous not only with his resources but with his spirit. He saw the good in people and dismissed their short suits. And he could be very funny. David was happy with his life. But in more recent years, he had reached a point where he had seemed perhaps to give up on living. He had developed bad arthritis and then bad knees and had to have knee surgery. And you helped him through that knee surgery. But it was hard for him then to invest the energy in physical therapy. He became more sedentary, a little bit on the side of immobile, and he withdrew. It was hard for family and friends to watch that downward spiral as things progressed. And in a sense, I know that many of you feel like you lost David some time ago. The grieving had already begun. There was a sense of loss that has been building. And that makes this day just that much harder. And it's hard to understand and to grapple with and accept that now he is gone. But I hope that you will all find comfort in the gifts of his life and the joy that he lived and the love that he shared and his generosity and his kindness and his loyalty and that those gifts will live on with you and through you. We are now in the month of Adar, just before the holiday of Purim. And our tradition teaches nothing happens by coincidence. There are four mitzvot that are the central observances of the festival of Purim. All four, I think, can be related to David's life. One is the obligation of Shalach Manot, that we give gifts to our friends, and David looked after his friends. And the second is Matanot Lev Yonim, to give gifts to the poor, and David gave to support many important causes and to help those who were in need. And the third is to feast. One of the mitzvahs of Purim is to party. No more needs to be said. And the fourth is the reading of the Megillah, the telling of the story of Purim. The fourth, I think, falls to you, Ethan, and to Sylvie and Bob and the whole family. To tell the story of the goodness that was David in his life, to embrace those good qualities, to enable them to live on. 
and Purim is a holiday which is celebrated in the synagogue. A holiday which affirms the centrality of the Jewish people in our lives. That our collective destiny is our individual destiny. Your grandfather Lewis understood that. That's why he served as president of our synagogue. Because he was committed to ensuring that Jewish continuity. And your father David understood that. That's why he gave to the Federation campaign and supported the Jewish community. And now that task falls to you to carry on that legacy as well. May David's spirit continue to motivate goodness, acceptance, and love. May his memory always be for a blessing. And we say, Amen. We'll rise now with the memorial prayer. El malay rahamim, shochein bameromim, hametzei menucha nechona tachat, kanfei atshechina, bimalot kadoshim etohorim, kezohar harakiyam azirim, and Ishmad, David ben Lebo ben Yamin, Shalach le Yolamo, Began Eden, Tehe Manuchato, Ahana, Balarachamim, Hastirei, who beset the Knafechle Olamim. Utseror, bitseror, achayim et nishmato, Adonai hu nachalato, v'yanu wach b'shalom al mishkavo, v'nomar, amen. Exalted, compassionate God, Grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure to the soul of our beloved David who has gone to his eternal home. O merciful one, we ask that he find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May his soul be bound up in the bond of life. May the Lord be his portion. May he rest in peace. And we say it together, Amen. Interment will follow at the B'nai Shuren Synagogue in Chesterland, excuse me, the B'nai Shuren Cemetery in Chesterland after which the family will be returning to Beachmont Country Club on Chagrin Boulevard in Orange. We will hold a brief service upon returning from the cemetery today, and the family will receive visitors until 6 p.m. this evening. Friends who wish may contribute to the Macular Degeneration Research Foundation or the Cleveland Orchestra.